this past Saturday, I had this speaking event. And um, it just so happens that it fell on my birthday. This past Saturday, October 23rd was my birthday. I committed to the speaking event a few months prior. And, you know, <laughs> interestingly enough, I'm going into this week and I, my, my method, everybody has a different method of preparation. My method of preparation is being quiet, um, letting God speak to me. I don't like to speak with messages that I think y'all need to hear. I always get to a place and I zone out and I let God hit me with a message that he wants me to deliver because somebody in our community needs to receive it. But leading up to Saturday morning, I just, I could not get a message. It's as simple as that. And for any speaker, I got my man Ed Hennings in the building. I'm sure my brother Tiki Davis is in the building. For any speaker, one of the most difficult and scary scenarios to be in is to know you got a speaking engagement coming up and you got nothing to deliver. But I didn't get scared right away because it's happened to me before. But God always comes through in the clutch for me. So I remember that Friday night, I'm still sitting around and I'm doing all the things that I normally do to try to get in the zone and I'm getting nothing. And now I'm panicking. And I started working or trying to work on something to speak about Friday from the time I woke up. The speaking engagement was Saturday, 9 a.m. in the morning. And all day, I'm like, God, please give me something. And the closer that it got to 9 a.m., and when I tell y'all I didn't sleep, I was literally up from Friday, 24 hours, into Saturday. Actually, I took a nap at 6 a.m. Saturday morning to 7 a.m. Now, there's nothing worse than going into an event and you have zero. Absolutely zero. And my girl, who's a good friend of mine down there, Joyce Walker, she believed in me enough to set me up with this event. So as I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh man, and I'm panicking, I'm thinking about her because I'm saying to myself, her name is on the line. It ain't just my name, but she vouched for me. She got me in there and now her name is on the line. And when 9 a.m. rolled around, it was the worst, the worst speaking engagement that I ever had. Now. Just so y'all understand, long before I knew speaking was a career, long before I looked at this as something I wanted to pursue professionally, I always inspired. I always spoke. I always was the one who gave gems and encouraged people to go out there and do their thing. I just didn't know it was a career. So for me, I always have something positive to say i always got something of substance to say but on saturday morning my brain locked and i got a room full of people who are looking at me and when i tell y'all i could not get through a sentence i damn near forgot my name i literally started off and almost forgot my name i was exhausted I didn't know what I was supposed to deliver. And by the time I was done, and you know you're bad. When you're done, and instead of saying thank you, you apologize. I was just that bad. Now, I could sit here and tell y'all, this was the first birthday I had without my mother being here. And... My mother always was the first call I got every single morning on my birthday and she would sing me happy birthday. 
and I knew that call wasn't coming, I could sit here and tell y'all, you know what? I was exhausted. I was up for 24 hours before. And when I got into the moment, I just couldn't think. I was a walking zombie. I could sit here and give y'all every excuse in the book. But that ain't what professionals do. That ain't what we do. Champions show up. Period. Champions show up. And when I was done, I was heartbroken. I was embarrassed. I needed just a minute for myself. So here it is, my birthday. And all I could do is sit in a dark room, do nothing. And for me, I was in the darkness all day. And by nine o'clock, it was lights out because the thought of being awake, the thought of spending any more time in the darkness was killing me. And I woke up the next morning and I went to church. And when I got to church, it just so happens that my pastor's message yesterday was total commitment. And I can't tell y'all but so much about what it was that he said, but I locked in on the title of his message, total commit commitment. And it was almost like God was speaking to me because while I was sitting there and I was being so hard on myself, which I should be, Sean, are you totally committed? And I started to think, to think and say to myself, what do you do when you're praying to God and you're asking him for something? And he just don't show up. What do you do when you go out there and you bomb so bad and you stink up the place so bad that people, instead of just telling you what it is, they try to come up with nice ways of making you feel a little bit better about how bad you did. What do you do when the hardest competition you will ever face is that person looking back at you in the mirror. And for me, even though I know it was a disaster, I know these people looked at me like, what the F did you bring him in for? They can never be as hard on me as I'm ever gonna be on myself. Because for me, I'm the most difficult Cold competition I will ever have. It ain't the greats out there. It's Sean. But I knew I can do better. I knew it. And as I was sitting and I came home from church yesterday and I'm in that dark place, things started to flow. God started to speak to me. And while I was in that darkness, he said, Sean, don't you understand I do my best work in the dark? And I couldn't understand it yesterday. But that's all I was hearing is I do my best work in the dark. And today as I got up and I started to think, what am I going to speak to everybody about? I just got to speak about the truth. Again, Sean, don't you understand I do my best work in the dark? You're in a dark place, but you don't see that this is where I do my best work. Let me do me while you do you. And I started to have an image of babies. And when they're conceived, it's done in the dark. When they grow, when that embryo starts to develop into a baby, it's done behind that mother's belly, that growth, it takes place in a dark place. And the only way that you know it is growing into something is because you see that mother's stomach starting to poke out. So you know on the inside there's growth. 
But long before that baby comes into this world, the developing, it had to be done in a dark place. And as I was sitting around this afternoon, I just heard God speak to me, Sean, I haven't even birthed you yet. I know you think you've been doing something out there, but I'm not even done developing you. You haven't been birthed. And that's what I'm telling some of y'all. While y'all are sitting and you're looking around and your businesses is not where you want it to be. And you're saying, I'm doing what I know how to do. And I put time and I put effort. Sometimes you're still being developed. Although on the surface, it seems like you're out there in the open, but right now you might still be in the dark and being in the dark is not a bad thing because God does his best work in the darkness. I sit and I think about a seed and a seed, no matter how small it is, in order for it to do what it was created to do, it has to be packed underground. It has to be buried in that damp, cold darkness. And when it finally starts to take root, when it finally gets to a place where people can see this seed, it's now a tree. It's now something that bears fruit long before it ever got to that place. In order for it to do what it was intended to do, it had to be in the dark. And I want y'all to stop fighting just like me. I was fighting being in this dark place. I was fighting saying, I've done these speeches a million times over. How in the world can I possibly get on that stage and bomb the way I did? But everybody does. We all want to see that sun come out. But that sun, sometimes it's a reminder, yes, that you've made it. And we all want that day in the sun. But how about that sun signifying something that I should have got the next morning I woke up, which is you're still here. You're still around. God ain't done with you yet. You are here to fight another day. The sun is up. Why are you sitting in the dark? You had a bad moment. Dust it off. And go out there and do what you do again. And that's why when I started, I said, I can't wait for Monday night. It might not be my greatest, but I got another chance. The sun came up today. And long before I have my place in the sun, just knowing that the sun came up and it's a new beginning. It's a new start. It's a new day for me. Monday night to stand in front of y'all. And do what I was put here to do. Just remember movers. Diamonds. They're dug up. You don't find diamonds. On top of the ground. You gotta go under the ground. Dig them up. And the most precious stone. On planet earth. It starts. Underneath. The ground we see trees that are standing a thousand feet tall but the strongest part of that tree is underground it's in the dark it's the roots don't make the mistake that I made I could tell y'all on any given day I'm ready to hit a stage I can tell y'all any given day, I'm ready to do what I was made to do. But sometimes God got to remind you, I'm not done working on you. Right now, you're still in the dark. I'm still developing you. I'm still preparing you. Because when I finally give birth to you, you're going to impact millions. Move us. I know we all want our day in the sun. We all do, it's human nature. But start looking at the sun for what it is. It's a new day. 
So if today didn't get off the way you wanted it, if yesterday didn't get off the way you wanted it, if things are not going the way you planned and intended, tomorrow morning when you wake up, that sun, it's going to come up regardless. And you look at it for what it is. It's a new day. And I'm going to tell y'all like my pastor told me. Are you totally committed? Are you totally committed? Because you're going to have a lot of bad days before you get to walk off into that sunset. But it takes total commitment. It takes total commitment to get through the times when there's no money, the times when there's no fanfare, the times when there's no likes, the times when there's nobody who's saying your name. It takes total commitment to bring you out of the darkness. So don't ever forget, movers. God does his best work in the dark. Hope y'all got something out of this. So peace and love, y'all.